All right, we've just taken a look at how to resolve a vector into its components. But now let's look into adding vectors through the method of components. In other words, let's, let's take different vectors and let's add them up through their components and let's come up with a new, um, a new resultant vector from those. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you some vectors over here and I'm gonna begin um, basically writing them out. So I'm gonna start here with the vector A is 100 newtons here. And let's just say that I made that 30 degrees above the positive x-axis here. And again, you have to define your axes. So this is my x, this is my y. I'm going to make that positive y. I'm going to make that positive x. Don't forget, you still do have a negative x-axis out here, right? There's a negative x and down here we still have a negative y-axis okay so that's clearly clearly defined now and let's say that I have a vector B here vector B let's just make that 90 newtons okay and I'm gonna make that 60 degrees above the negative x-axis just to be consistent here and um, let's just say I have another vector here vector C and let's just say that that's gonna be 50 newtons and I'm gonna define that one here as 45 degrees okay and that's gonna be below my negative x-axis so I have a magnitude an angle and a reference a magnitude an angle and a reference a magnitude an angle and a reference for all of these right so what I want to do is I want to add all of these vectors up. Okay, so I want to find some resultant vector, R, my resultant vector, okay, by adding up all of these vectors, adding up vector A plus vector B plus vector C. Okay, I want to find out what that is. Now you cannot just add these up. Please do not do that. In other words, we cannot just say 100 plus 90 plus 50, right? We can't say 190 plus, we can't say it's 240 newtons. It doesn't work like that, okay? We have to resolve all of these x all of these components into the x components and the y components for the vector A, vector B, and vector C. Now notice this is tail to tail method. They're all tail to tail. This method works the best conceptually when we're dealing with force because you can imagine that you're being pulled upon at all different directions by a force like this okay so what I'm gonna do over here I made a table and this table is gonna break down the components for us for the vector so you're gonna have an X component here and a Y component for each vector and what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna write them down in terms of their trig functions and then we're gonna take the actual values and then we're gonna add them up at the end and we're gonna get a final X and we're gonna get a final Y okay so let's take a look first here at this vector a well I want to look for my X component so we know the X component is the cosine and is this X component positive it sure is right so the first component here I'm gonna have positive 100 cosine 30 and I'm just gonna write it like this first okay I'm just gonna write it leave it as the cosine and the sine so you can understand what I'm doing the next one here, I'm going to look at my Y component. Is that positive? It sure is, right? It's positive. So I'm going to have positive 100 sine 30, like this. So now I have my X component and my Y component for vector A, okay, right here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to vector B right here. And I'm going to look for the X component and the Y component. So my X component for B is I'm going to have negative, right, negative X component here. So I'm going to put negative here, 90 cosine of 60. Okay, because X is the cosine, and I'm negative because I'm along this axis. Next, I'm going to do the Y component of vector B vector B the Y component is it positive yes it is right it's going up right so I'm gonna have positive 90 sine 
of 60. Okay, so now I have these components. Next, I'm going to go to vector C. So I'm, I started here, and I'm just going counterclockwise around, adding the vectors. Vector C. Okay, let's look at the x component here. Is it positive or negative? It's definitely negative, right? Because it's along the negative x-axis, so negative. And I'm going to say 50 cosine 45 degrees. And then I'm going to do the y component. And is that negative or is that positive? Is it that's down here, right? So it's negative. So I'm going to say negative 50 sine 45. Now let's take a long, hard look at this, okay? Just to clarify what we did. I have all of my x components here. They're all the cosines, cosine, cosine, cosine. Why is it cosine? Because all of my angles are defined to the horizon. You see this horizon here? 30 degrees. 60 degrees, 45 degrees, everything is defined in terms of the horizon. When that's the case, the x is all cosines. If I look over here on the y components, all of the y components are sines, sine, 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 y. Again, same reason, we drop to the horizontal every time. That gives us sine as our answer here. Okay, and then the, the signs of the actual components, plus and minus values, in the A component, we had a positive X and a positive Y. In the B one, we had a negative X and a positive Y. And in the C component, we had a negative X and a negative Y. Okay? So the next thing we got to do is we have to take all of these values and we need to plug them into our calculators. And we're going to get, we're going to add all of these up. We're just going to add them up. We're going to get a final X value. And then we're going to take these and we're, we're going to add all of these up and we're going to get a final y value. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, so now what do we do with this? Well, basically I've added all of these up and I'm going to get 6.25, positive 6.25. All of those x values gave me something over here that was more positive in that direction, okay? So I ended up, if we had a tug of war here, this we, won in, we ended up winning in the x direction. In the y direction, I had positive 92.59. There was a lot more y forces acting up than down, so that's what we got. Now, the next question is, what do we do with these two components? In other words, how do I reconstruct these two components into my resultant vector? And in the next video, I'm going to show you how to do that. So after you get these resultant x and this resultant y, you're able to write that in a form where you can get the new magnitude angle and the reference.